Hey guys, what's happening? I'm Jim, thanks for stopping by, and I make tutorial videos here every week, editing my photos in different software products and sharing tips and tricks along the way. This is episode number one of my tutorial series on Luminar AI. It's a great product, I've had a lot of fun with it. I've already created a lot of videos showing different workflow uh, ideas, tips, tricks, things like that, but as it's just now launching and becoming available to the general public, I wanted to create a tutorial series that would help new users get up to speed quickly. Now, if you used previous Luminar products like Luminar 3 or 2018 or Luminar 4, Luminar AI will feel familiar to you and your skills and knowledge that you learned in the previous products will translate. However, there are some nuances and some differences and I hope to share all those things that I've learned by being a beta tester and working through this product over the last number of weeks and share that with you in this tutorial series. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. When you first open Luminar, of course, you're gonna have a blank canvas and that's because you have not told Luminar where your photos are. Now, before I do that, I would actually go up here to Luminar AI and I recommend clicking check for updates just in case. And also, if you anticipate using Luminar as a plugin, if you click install plugins and sometimes your system will come up and say, hey, do you wanna do this? Um, and I do. Um, you can see that you can choose Photoshop and Lightroom to install Luminar AI as a plugin to those apps in case you wanna do that. Now, separately, I'll make a video about using Luminar AI as a plugin, but for purposes of getting started, if you anticipate doing that, I recommend doing that right away. Now, this will be a UI tour. I'm gonna to walk through the UI and share some tips and tricks and help to get you up to speed quickly with this product. You've got catalog, which we're gonna to get to in a second, which is basically where your photos are displayed. You have templates, which is basically a one-click look to apply to your photo. You have the edit tab, which is where you can get in and manipulate individual sliders to further refine or control the image. And then of course you have export. Export is, I wanna save this photo outside of Luminar or I wanna send it to a popular service and things like that. And on the right hand side, while we're in catalog mode, you will notice uh, you can click on these tabs across the top when you have photos here and they will take you to different components of the application. But we're gonna start in catalog and you basically have a plus sign here. You can add a folder with images or you can edit a single image which will drop just that single image in. I wanna add a folder. So I've got a photo, a folder I should say, of demo files, it's right there. I'm gonna go ahead and click add folder and let that drop into Luminar. Now to clarify, as I said, I will do a deep dive on the catalog component, but I'm not technically importing the photos. I'm letting Luminar AI know where my photos are. And I'm basically saying, this folder full of demo files is on my desktop. Please take a look at it. And so it's acting like a file browser or file viewer. You're not pulling them in to a specific Luminar AI database like you do in some other applications. Okay, so while I was talking, you can see these photos, or I should say this folder of photos came in. And if on the right-hand side, you can see my demo files folder. It has 457 photos in it. So I can scroll through. This is pretty quick. This is a combination of JPEGs, raw files, things like that. Now also I said you could add a single image. So you can click edit single image. And I have this single image called sunset. I'm gonna click open. And you will notice when I add the single image, it's dropping me to templates. Now I'm gonna back up and we'll get to templates in a minute. So I'm gonna go back to catalog. And you can see this photo is by itself. And the reason why is on this right hand side, I'm in something now that's called single image edits. As the name implies, this is a place you can drop a photo, do your edits and not actually put it in the catalog component of Luminar. Again, we're gonna get into the catalog in depth in a future video in this tutorial series, but I've got all photos, single image edits, recently added, which is all of these photos because you've seen me add them in this video. Under here, I've got folders, so I can go click on that, and as you'll see, that will take me back to that folder full of photos that I imported just a moment ago. And then albums is basically a virtual collection. I can take photos from different folders and put them all together in a single album. And I'll show you that in the catalog video. Okay, while I'm on this page, I also wanna to point to the upper right-hand corner. I'm currently set to small, but this basically changes the image size. As you can see, I will show you the different versions of this. And so this is showing you from largest all the way down to small. I tend to keep it in small simply because I like the smaller thumbnail, but you can adjust that to your taste. Also, you can see on this uh, right here, above these images, you can show all photos or you can show favorites, re rejects, anything that's unmarked or anything that's been edited. So 
I haven't done any editing yet because I'm literally just put these in here now for the first time and I haven't faved anything either, but you can do that. You can see as you hover over photo, there's a little heart. You can fave that. And then if you sort by favorites, you will now have one photo because I've only favorited one. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back to all photos and I'll unfave that for now. You can also sort by capture time, edit time, any other kind of ratings that you've applied, right? In ascending or descending order. I'm just gonna leave it at capture time. That's totally fine with me. You've also got a little search icon here. You click on that. As you can see, you can search for an image or folder by name, date, or extension. You just type it in, hit enter. And again, we'll talk about that in the catalog video. And now in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, I want to point out that I'm the photo I've highlighted is in this upper left corner here of this uh, barn and this tree. But in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see there's the file name, DSC underscore 0124 copy 2.nef. It is a Nikon RAW file that I took many years ago. And in fact, you might say, well, Jim, where's the EXIF data? I want to know what date you took that on. Well, you can see it's a RAW file, but there's an I there. I, of course, is information. If you click on that, you will find that information. ISO 165 millimeters, F8, blah, blah, blah. I took this on the 31st of March, 2009 with my Nikon D40X, my first DSLR camera. Long time ago, come a long way. It's been a lot of fun and I'm learning a lot every day. It's so exciting to be a photographer. Anyway, that's where the info is about your exposure and your file, just in case you weren't clear on that. Okay, now let's click over to templates and templates are basically AI based recommendation engine. And what it does is it scans the contents of your image and says, hey, that looks like a landscape. I should recommend a landscape template for you. And a template effectively is a collection of edits compiled into one, basically operating the way what you might know as a preset or look, but the AI component of them allows them to suggest things that correspond to the contents of the photo. So in this case, this section, by the way, for this photo is where you will find the recommendations. So you can see there's a couple of different things that are recommended here. You've got various other categories. And by the way, you can use a template from any category. It doesn't matter. I can go in here to this experimental portrait and I can say, I want feather light and I stuck it on there and it doesn't matter. So you can choose it, the recommendation engine based on AI will suggest things that should make sense to your photo, but you can adjust that. You can also come down here, the bottom right hand corner and adjust the opacity of that template across your photo. As you can see, it's adjusting as I slide it. I'll go back. I will take one of these easy landscapes. I will take clean light and I think that looks pretty good. You can also fave these and click these three dots to edit further or reset the adjustments back to your unedited image. Now, as far as templates go, I will of course do a separate video diving in more depth into templates. We'll get to that in a future video in the same series. Now, the next step in the process would be edit if you wanna come over here and do some customization to the template that's applied. Now, this is a recommended workflow by Luminar. Start in the catalog where you find an image, you go to templates where you get AI-based recommendations for uh, sending you on a creative path with that image. You can go to edit if you would like to, you don't have to, you can go from template straight to export, export your photo and be done. Or you can go to catalog and skip templates and go straight to edit and then export and be done. It doesn't matter. You can choose. You're not forced into any particular thing. You're driving, you're in control, you do whatever you want. Um, in edit, you can come in and you can see you've got four different tabs over here. And again, I will do videos about each of these tabs and going into more depth, but they basically give you the ability to come in and customize the look of your image. Let's say I decide I don't want this look or this template. I'm gonna hit reset. I'm gonna go back to an unedited photo. And now I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna use enhance AI. And maybe I just wanna edit the photo a little bit, maybe a little bit of contrast here. Maybe pull up the shadows a tad, pull down the highlights a little bit. Maybe I wanna go to color and just give it a little bit of bump of vibrance just because I like my colors. And there we go, I have a photo that I like, it's edited and I'm done with it. That's when you can move on to export. Now, while you're editing, if you wanna check, you have a couple of icons up here. You have this one. This is your sliding window that shows you the before and after for the edit that you're currently doing. And this one is, if you hold that down, that shows you the before and when you let go, it shows you the current state. Also, while you're in the edit panel, there's a couple of other things that you can do. If you go to view, you can show the film strip. And so at the bottom, you will see the photos that are in the folder that you're currently viewing a photo from. So if you're editing the photo here, which I am, you could say, oh, I like that, but now I wanna move on and do this. So having the film strip available or visible can be helpful. It's not a preference that I like, so I tend to leave that unchecked and I just like to see a full screen image. The other thing that may be helpful 
is the photo actions panel. And this is basically where you can fave a photo or um, basically unselect. I'm also gonna turn that off because it's not something I really do a lot, but I wanted to point that out. The other thing that comes in really handy is the history. You might wonder where history is, but if you go to the bottom corner here, while you're editing the image, you will see history. If you click on that, it opens this dialog box that has all the different edits, and you can go back. I can go back to my original if I'd like to. I can go back to where this feather light template was applied. There we go. I can go back to where I just started with Enhanced AI with the Accent AI, or I can go back to my last edit. You have the flexibility, and that's where history is. It's hidden in that bottom corner. And when you want to remove history, you can just click back on one of these tabs for one of the four major editing tabs, which by the way, they're categorized in a very intelligent manner. I think there's Essentials, which is what we're on. There is Creative, which as the name implies, gives you the ability to do a lot of creative things. There's Portrait, which would obviously lend itself well to portrait work. And then of course there's Pro, which has a few advanced tools. Again, I'll get into all of these in the future, uh, in future videos in this series. Uh, next up though, let's say I'm finished with this photo and I love it and I'm ready to export it. I just click on export and you can see over here, you have a few different options. Save to disk, mail, messages. If you're a photographer and want to put this in your portfolio, you can send it to SmugMug or 500px. If you click save to disk, which is what I typically do, you can come in here and rename it. I'll call it farm scene. Um, I can choose the location, wherever I wanna put it, and I can apply various other edits as well, such as choosing a different color space and a different file format and a quality setting. I'm gonna click cancel. So that's it for this one, my friends. That's a summary of the UI and a tour of how it works. I basically recognize three themes in Luminar AI. The first one is simplify. I think they wanna make it simple to edit your photos. They don't wanna create a lot of complexity or confusion in terms of how do I do this or how do I do that or anything in the post-processing of your images. I think they wanna make it more easy and more accessible to more people. I think the second theme I picked up is they're focused really on quickly getting to results. The way it's set up, you go to your catalog, you find a photo, you go to template, you use AI to find suggestions. You can refine those suggested edits in the editing panel and then move on and export it. It's about quickly getting results and moving on. And the third is really speed and performance. I find this app is snappier, more responsive than Luminar 4 was. It just works quickly. They rebuilt it from the ground up with a new engine underneath. I think the performance is proving out to be much better than it was in Luminar 4. And overall, I'm having a lot of fun. So that's my UI tour of Luminar AI. That's episode number one in my tutorial series. And I'll be back really soon with video number two. Thanks for watching, my friends. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, things like that, don't hesitate to leave that down below. And I'll see you soon, my friends. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and adios.